My guest now, Florida State Senator Lori Berman, a Democrat representing District 31 covering parts of Palm Beach County. Thank you for being with us, Senator. Thank you so much for having me here today. We talked to your House colleague. I'll begin where I began with him, uh, the Ryan Rogers death and the questions that once again come out uh, to us and certainly to Florida lawmakers. Crime, recidivism, red flag warnings that perhaps were seen, perhaps ignored mental health or mental health resources. And people, somebody said to me yesterday, it just feels like the nightmare keeps happening again and again. What can Florida lawmakers do about it? What more should we be doing? And why should people believe anything really can be done to advance this? I mean, we need to have hope and we need to believe that we can address these issues. I believe that mental health funding is a significant part of this. Florida continues to rank in the bottom of all states. And if we started to put more emphasis on mental health funding, hopefully we could find these people, address them. I mean, recidivism is a problem. Evidently, he did have a criminal background. Hopefully, this death will cause us to look at this, these issues again and have a full discussion because it's really d discouraging and frightening that your child goes out for a bike ride and, and doesn't come back home. So I'm hoping that we continue to discuss mental health. We really have to spend more money on mental health and that we look at this issue in, to see what can be done to prevent another tragedy like this. The Republican governors are in plaudits, as has the First Lady, about pushing in his administration for more money. Uh, there are those who argue we're still in the lower tier but are pushing for more. Is it just a matter of money or do we have to change our whole mindset here? I think we have to change our mindset a little bit. I think the way that we distribute our mental health money through the um, agencies has to be re looked at also. We need to make sure. And here in Palm Beach County, we lost a big mental health facility. We need to con figure out how we're gonna have enough beds and how we're gonna treat people properly. Your key legislative goals, both for your constituents here in a hyper-local fashion and as the Democratic delegation, obviously Republicans in control in the House and Senate, but what are the keys you're focusing on in this upcoming session? You know, I get, to, I get the opportunity to file 19 bills as a senator. We're not limited in our bills. Yeah. So I'm really focusing this year on so many different areas. It's hard to pick, pick one uh, top area, but um, some of the things I'm doing, I'm doing a bill about human trafficking. I'm doing a bill about um, making sure that victims of sexual abuse are not unmasked so that they don't, their names are not put out in the public. Um, I'm doing legislation to make sure that our waterways, if they're impaired, that there are signs so that people know that they don't go into the waterways. But the bill that um, I just filed and that I'm really excited about, and it sort of ties into the what we were discussing, has to do with the um, death of a child in Broward County. We call it Grayson's Law. He, he, his um, custodial parent um, was threatening to kill the custodial mother. Mm -hmm. And the mother went to court, asked for an injunction, said, I don't want to bring my child to his house because he's threatening to dismember me and do all these things. And the court said, he's not threatening the child. There's nothing we can do. The child went to his house. He killed the child and then killed himself. So we don't ever want to see something like that happen again. And it's because the law wasn't complete in that regard. So now what this bill says is if somebody threatens the mother, yes, you can use that as a basis to address child custody. With the Democrats in the minority, all of this presumes that you can reach cross the aisle, have bipartisan support. How much of this do you think can effectively become legislation that will win support, Democrats I, I, and Republicans? I do think an issue like this is a nonpartisan issue. I do believe we will go be able to get legislation passed. People understand we have to protect our most vulnerable, our children. Let me ask you as well, and I'll, I'll flip the questions around because I know there's a topic uh, that uh, you, you want to get to, and so did Representative Overdorf on redistricting, which I still think is going to need to be its own separate broadcast. But I do want to ask you a pocketbook issue before we move on to some of the contentious, other contentious hot button issues about those insurance premiums. We're, we're doing stories on it. We're getting calls all the time. That's where the rubber meets the road for a lot of people. They're being priced out of my home. You've got new flood insurance rates coming in. Effectively, is there anything you can do but say, we feel your pain? Yes, I mean, as uh, Rep. Overdorf said, we did pass a bill last year, but unfortunately what happened with the bill is we said that um, there were going to be requirements regarding roofers and doing adjusting, and the court threw out those requirements. So I think we do le need to look at that issue again and see if we can address that, because there is a lot of fraud, and that's what's causing these rates to rise. So 
there are so many different factors. It's not just fraud. We have reinsurance problems. The reinsurance rates are going up. We have attorneys involved. We have insurance companies involved. But we need to keep bringing all the stakeholders to the table and figure out what we can do to get the rates lower because it's untenable the way it is right now. What should parents expect on the education front? It consumes about a third of the budget. Yeah, so on the education front, um, we're continuing to see a lot of support for charter schools and vouchers, and those concern me because I want to see our money go to our traditional public schools. But why not? I think but why so. not? But choice, and uh, Michael Bloomberg just talked about it. In a world where people want choice and everything, uh, what's wrong with choice? I, I, our public schools right now in Palm Beach County, our traditional public schools have tremendous amounts of choice in it. You can go to a magnet school that does um, maritime. You can go to a magnet school that has vocational training. So why do we need to have additional when we have such a great choice program already? And what happens is when you put these additional charter schools in, it hurts the funding for our traditional public school system. But what about the argument that we live in a world that choice engenders competition, competition is good, and that choice, and it sounds counterintuitive to people to say that choice can't do anything but perhaps help allow for better choices, better educational opportunities for the parent to make that decision. And you know the argument that Democrats are beholden to teachers groups. Yeah, no, I don't believe that we're beholden to teachers groups, but I, I have heard that argument. But I also think that we need to public we need to fund our public schools well enough so that parents want to make the choice to keep their child in a public school and we don't fund our public schools well enough. It will be a debate again, Republicans in control, so it would seem choice will become uh, something that will continue to be a pivotal issue that Democrats may not be able to change the outcome of that. I but, agree. We'll, but we will keep an eye on it. I want to ask you about uh, two things, uh, abortion. Uh, Roe v. Wade, uh, we saw the arguments before the Supreme Court, a decision perhaps next June could weaken or even overturn Roe v. Wade. We don't know, but it could also engender big changes in Florida where Republicans control the legislature. And I know you were very vocal about this, that this week. What's going to happen? Um, I believe that Florida will be looking at a Mississippi-style law. Um, the Texas style, which is the six-week ban, is not, there doesn't seem to be the appetite for it by leadership in Florida. But I do believe we will see an abortion bill. We have heard that the Senate president, the Speaker of the House, both have said that they do want to ban abortions in Florida. So I believe we will see something along the lines of the Mississippi law in Florida. Now, I filed a bill, which is a proactive bill, which says that under Florida law, because we have a constitutional provision for privacy, that everyone in Florida has reproductive rights and those rights are, are, allow them to get an abortion. And that in the event somebody tries to stop that, there would be, um, a, you could go for civil court injunction, including damages and attorney's fees. Um, I don't know if my bill, my bill's an uphill battle, but um, I think it's important to have the discussion and by having the discussion and recognizing that Florida has a higher right of privacy than the U.S. Constitution and that we should recognize that health care is, reprodu is, is reproductive rights also. What's your, uh, I want to move on to another topic. This one's so key. What's your message to Republicans and to Floridians in general on this most contentious topic? Um, like I said, abortion is health care. That's my main message, and people should be entitled to access health care. Senator, two other quick questions, just because time runs away from us. There's so many things we could talk about, but one, uh, I know that off camera, you and the representative said no redistricting. I still argue that needs to be its own discussion, but Republicans argue, listen, we're bound by uh, laws in Florida that voters passed, and that uh, it is a state where Republican registration is growing, and we think we're going to have districts that work out pretty well. Uh, what's the pushback you would give as a Democrat? Well, I would say that if you look at the maps that have been proposed so far, the Senate maps versus the House maps, the House maps look uh, have a lot of gerrymandering in them, whereas the Senate maps seem to have been drawn more in accordance with fair districts. But we will see all that eventually. The courts tend to do a review of that, and so we'll have to see how that plays Correct. out. Correct, and we're not sure yet. Um, the Senate draws their own Senate maps, the House draws their own House maps, but the House and Senate both draw congressional maps, and we're not sure where we'll land on the congressional maps. Remaining time, how concerned are you about Omicron and the vaccine, uh, anti-vaccine mandate push? Republicans say it's a matter of choice. In our remaining 30, 40 seconds, uh, you your concerns about where we may end up going. We hope we don't, all very, of us hope that, but. Very concerned. In our last special session, we limited our ability to respond to future variants. 
one of the things we did, we said schools can't require masks. So now if Omicron comes, no school will be able to put in place a mask mandate like Palm Beach County did during the last rise in the variant, but Palm Beach County took it away when the, the numbers went down. Um, and also the, the vaccine exemptions that we put in place were ridiculous, including for anticipated pregnancy, meaning almost any woman could be, be exempt from having a vaccine. Um, so we've, we've really hindered ourselves and I'm worried with the new variant that we, we put in place procedures that are gonna make it very difficult to address it. Senator, and I would also say to Representative Overdorf, there's so many things to talk about. We appreciate you at least setting the legislative stage and the, this is a conversation that's just beginning on all of these topics. We always humbly tell our audience, we know we can only begin to touch on it. We certainly know where to reach both of you in Tallahassee and we will be doing so, but we'll be back with more in just a moment.